Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing today? God has been incredible, and I am seeing more and more evidence that he is in control, that he knows what he's doing, and that, above all, in the end, he wins. I wanted to do this blog post today because God really burdened my heart concerning some things within the last week. Um, I have um, information, uh, some stuff from the Time Warp Wife that I'll be glad to share with you tomorrow. But today, because of what is taking place tomorrow, I felt very led of the Lord to share some things that are on my mind. And I hope maybe they'll help encourage you I'd say about a week or so ago, yeah, about maybe two weeks ago, uh, I posted something on a political blog that I have, and I sent it out to local newspaper. It never did anything, but it's reading pretty well on my blog, and I, I had to share it with all of you. I'm not sure if any of you... Uh, watch this particular show, but there's this animated show called South Park. It's been around for 20 years now, and it's hysterical. Uh, I know some of you might not like it, but uh, I have to say that uh, Matt Parker and Trey Stone are what I like to refer to as equal opportunity offenders. And if you haven't had a chance to check out this current season yet, I suggest you do because it, it's something you've got to see because they speak very honestly about what's going on with this election. And they do it in their usual irreverent fashion, and they, they speak the truth on it. And I think it's something that people need to know. Uh, in the episodes, they refer to uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, or the person who's supposed to be Donald Trump, which is uh, a character in there, uh, Mr. Garrison. He, he was uh, the, uh, I believe he was the fourth grade teacher to the boy, to the, the four boys, Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny. They basically refer to Hillary as a turd sandwich and Trump, or Mr. Garrison, as giant douche. Now, I know that sounds really weird and, and obnoxious, but you know, it fits both of them, and it not only fits both of them, but I'm telling you, it's caused me a lot of concern, and I have been praying a lot concerning this election, and I, it, there's things about the candidates that I have issues with that I had to share. I'm sure you know that, bottom line, my motto when it comes to the elections is to vote the Bible. And I'm not going to back down from that. There's no way in a snowstorm I'm going to do that. My thing is, in light of these presidential elections, both I and Ricky, we're planning on doing something for the first time, and ever since I've been voting, that's probably going to shock you, and that's pretty much this. I'm not voting for either of them. I'm not voting for either Trump or Hillary. Unless God shows me otherwise, especially where Trump, in particular where Trump's concerned, I'm not voting for him, and I'm certainly not voting for Hillary. Why, you ask? Simple. Neither one of them is fit for office, nor for any political field. As far as I'm concerned, Hillary is not fit to be dog catcher, and neither is Donald Trump. And I'll explain why. First off, we've got Trump, a.k.a giant douche, who, while he's a brilliant businessman, okay, this man has openly stated that he sees no need to repent of his sins, to ask God for forgiveness of his sins, which is, a, to me, a, it's a clear requirement of salvation. It's stated in the Bible. It says that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I mean, there, there's so many verses that state the importance of repentance. This guy's insulted more classes of people than I can ever count. 
and to me he's really a Democrat in Republican garb. Now, I know that there are a lot of you, especially my brothers and sisters, who say the guy got saved, he's a baby Christian, yada yada. I see no evidence of it. I have seen some interesting things about the man, but I'm not convinced. And the mere fact that he has so many evangelical Christians, especially well-known ones, applauding on him, hanging on him, like he's the second coming, it, it really bothers me. It makes me ill. It offends me deeply as a born-again believer. Hillary, a.k.a. Turd Sandwich, she's a whole lot worse. She basically calls anyone who supports Trump or pretty much anyone that won't vote for her she calls them foul names. I mean, she called Bernie supporters basement dwellers. And she has also referred to anybody that does support Trump or that supports conservative Christian values as a basket of deplorables were irredeemable and a whole lot more. This is a woman, too, that uh, it, if and she gets into office, she's going to make abortions available on demand at any time in the, in, during the baby's gestation. She's going to shred the Second Amendment, and trust me, she will. And she's going to make sure that homosexual sex marriage continues. And even worse yet, our rights as Christians are going to be shattered because anyone who openly practices their faith by refusing to perform, sell any type of food, flowers, photography, or, and or give a marriage license to anyone that's practicing the sinful lifestyle of fornication and sodomy, because that's just what same-sex marriage is, they're going to have legal action taken against them, even being put in jail and losing everything they own. And also, she has stated that she will fashion laws to force Christians to go against their faith. I don't care what law comes into play. I'm not going against Almighty God. I feel, guys, that this election is way too important to throw my vote, to cast my vote to either candidate. So... I'm doing something for the first time ever. I'm voting my conscience and my faith. And I'm voting for a man named Evan McMullen and his running mate, Mindy Finn. They're true conservative individuals. They base their platform on both the Bible and the Constitution, genuinely. I know some of you are going to think this is stupid, that I'm wasting my vote, but I'm not. Anybody who votes third party is not wasting their vote, especially with this man. I believe that there's something with this guy. I believe that there could be something here. Now, I refuse to waste my vote on giant douche or turd sandwich. And that's just me. And I pray that all of you won't waste your vote on a douche and a turd, pardon me. Please, please pray. Do do what God's word says. Seek God's face on this. And when you go to the polls, take your Bible principles with you. Um, I'm, I have a, a link here if you want to know more about Evan McMullen. See for yourself what this guy is, is, is about. Seriously. This is somebody that I think has, I believe what it takes in this area. That's just me. But also, I also want to leave you also with something from a very godly man named T.C. Stallings. He was in the movie War Room. He played the husband, in, in case you're wondering. He stated something that really got me, and I have the link for it here. And I'm just going to sum it up. He came up with five things that he feels to remember, he, we need to remember during this election. He says, first off, God is sovereign, and he is. No matter what, nothing surprises him, he's in control, and we need to keep trusting him regardless of who gets elected. And we need to trust in our prayers, we need to trust God, we need to trust as number one says, trust in his sovereignty. We need to trust in our prayers, not in our opinion or preference or, the, or news media or friends or anything. 
we need to seek God's face, as I said before. We need to ask the Lord, who lines up with your sovereign will, then trust his wisdom. We need to continue studying God's word and, and with faithful prayers. We can be confident in the guidance of the Holy Spirit with whatever actions we take tomorrow. He just simply says, pray and obey. And it's not about you or me, but it's about how God will be honored in this. That's how I see it. But he also says, don't put so much faith in any one person unless it's God. And I so agree with that. I so agree. Uh, I see how people are saying, too, that they're calling Trump another Cyrus, King Cyrus. And I understand where they're coming from. I don't agree with it, but I respect it. Um, I have a lot of friends on both sides of the aisle, and I respect what they believe. And this leads to number five. No matter who gets elected, Christians must still be Christians. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to stand up for God's word, to follow Jesus, and to do what he's called us to do while we are living in this nation. As long as we still have a Bible, I'm going to I'm going to read it and obey it no matter who's elected. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit's leading no matter who's elected. And I'm going to follow and, and accept God's plan for my life no matter who we're what is elected we need to continue following and loving god and loving people that's how i see it as he, as i said again god is still god no matter what we need to put him first and tomorrow we need to just pray and obey we need to do what the spirit of god leads us to do i have what he stated from facebook in in great you know in great detail and I really encourage you guys to check it out and listen to it. Right now, I most of all just pray that you all follow the words of the Apostle Paul, which was I found in today's um, Bible Gateway verse of the day, which I think is very appropriate. It's this, I exhort therefore that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a, a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. That's very important. There's something interesting, too, out of Philippians 2, verse 15, that calls us to live lives of honor and integrity. But I also want to leave you with the verse that I posted here, too. Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, people. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So bottom line, people, God is truly in control. I pray that you take the time to pray, not only for this election, but most of all for this nation. Take the time to remember that God is in control, not just of in the not just with this election, but in everything that takes place within this world. And as I said, I, I pray that you lift up our leaders in prayer and that when you go to the voting booth tomorrow, when you go to the voting booth, that you take your biblical principles with you. Above all, vote the Bible. I have to get going. Uh, it's getting a bit late. But I wish you all a wonderful evening. And I pray that when you go and vote tomorrow, you vote according to the Bible and your conscience. You have an awesome evening, guys. Bye for now.